hello there and you are here at tech talks podcast and i'm tech Lorette, and thank you so much for tuning in and thank you for stopping by if you're a new person and i'm all very much grateful for everyone and it blesses me to know that you have been listening and watching this podcast um so yeah we are here doing my devotion and um it's called little things matter those little things make a big difference and you can um easily download this book if you want to catch up or read along with me and um, dive in um, you can find it on amazon and you can either get the kindle version or the paperback and you can go back to these recordings that's the lovely thing about this it's a recording and you can uh, do this on your own or with some friends um, more the merrier i say and hey uh, let's get started and we are in chapter um 13 mistakes made this is a good reminder for me as well okay the verse in this is proverbs 24 16 and i think before we get started it's probably wise to pray right all right dear lord i thank you that you are full of wisdom and love and you have mercy on people like us who make mistakes lord thank you that your love and your blood um, and how it covers a multitude of sin and you claim us back um, through Jesus. Thank you, Father, for that. And, and I pray we all receive from you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so like I said, Proverbs 24, 16, for the righteous fall seven times and rises again, but the wicked stumble in times of calamity. Okay, so what do you think of when you hear the word mistakes right um error fault um slip um misunderstanding miscalculation misinterpret all that stuff right that's what i think of i'm one of those people who i mean i really i think i sometimes strive too much for perfection because I don't want to be, you know, judged. I don't want to be pointed out. I don't want to be an embarrassment, if you will. Um, I think a lot of us Christians try to be the spiffy Christian because we, we want to make right. We want to do good. We want to glorify God. But I think sometimes we forget to really um, allow, sometimes it's good to allow mistakes to happen for room to grow and to, and to have room for um, learning. Because to be honest, I think for me, the best way I learn is when I get a little dirty. And then that, and I'm not saying to have room to sin. I'm saying, you know, when it comes to learning about some things, you know, give yourself a little lead way to maybe, hey, if I, if I drop the ball, hey, hey it's okay. I, I can always pick it up pick it back up. I think that's basically what I'm trying to say is when you trip and fall, don't, don't be too embarrassed because that's going to happen. But the good news is there's a solution and that is to pick yourself up, dust yourself off and go back to God. And that's, that's what I'm trying to say here mainly. Okay. But I want to hone in on something. I'm going to try to do some reading here for you guys, because I feel like the best way to get it out is um, is to read to you what I've already kind of written out. Okay. Um, so let me just read. Let me try to bring some clarity about what I mean by religion and legalism. Religion is more of a man-made mandate of traditions, rules, and the should do's and should don'ts. Should don'ts. <laughs> Sounds weird when I read it out loud. Okay. A lot of Christians or religious people claim that if you keep up with the discipline of going to church and you don't make any mistakes and you never sin, then God will be well pleased with you and this makes you righteous. <clears throat> I think we can all agree that that's kind of like not true. <laughs> okay, bear with me. Um... So I go on to say that I believe this is somewhat correct, but when you rely so much on your own efforts and focus more on the practices 
that the church claims are good to keep you in a disciplined state of mind, then it is possible that you could be become you could become too legalistic and miss out on the heart that is behind what religion was intended to do. People put religion in place to help those who don't know how to be righteous and to live a holy life. However, the downfall to this mindset put a damper on looking to God and relying on him. Instead, the person relies on their own efforts and rule playing. I used to think that there was no room for mistakes and you must strive for perfection. I used to think that you had to make it right and do right in order to be in good favor with the Lord. Oh, how I am slowly learning that it is just the opposite. God isn't in the business of, hey, yes, mistakes all the time. No, he allows permission for mistakes to happen. He makes space and time for this allowance. What do I mean? So I go on to explain to you a cute little story about me and my six-year-old um, daughter at the time. And she was studying her sight words for school. She was in kindergarten at the time. And she was getting like really frustrated because she kept messing up. She kept, she kept making mistakes. She kept getting hard on herself. She was putting herself down even. She was thinking that she was stupid because she kept, she just she just couldn't get it right. Um, so then something, something happened through that. And I, I told her that it is okay to make mistakes and that she is learning how to do this and that she needs to give herself permission to struggle sometimes. And then that is when I heard the Lord say to me, Tekla, you need to apply this very idea to yourself and help others, others see that I'm okay with them making mistakes. No, I don't want people to walk all over me and take advantage of who I am, but I do want people to understand that I love them through their mis misunderstandings, their mistakes, their error, their failures, and that I am more than willing to teach them through it all. I can make all things new. I am cap capable to mend, restore, correct, and I discipline those I love and who are called according to my father's purpose. So I believe one of the struggles to um, part to part of the questions of are mistakes allowed? My answer would be um, unforgiving ourselves. However, if we don't love ourselves, it's hard to forgive ourselves. We need to overcome the lie. If I can't, who can? And I wonder, does this include God? I think that for, uh, for so long, we grew up with um, that mindset, if we do good, then we will be loved or accepted. If I clean up my room or get an A on my test, or if I score one for the team, or if I perform well, then my parents will be happy, and so will everyone else. If I please everyone and make no mistakes, then I'm more likely to, to receiving one's affection. Have you ever thought of that? Have, have those thoughts or something similar um, enter in your mind when it comes to mistakes? I noticed my daughter was slipping into the negative mindset of performance driven for your affection. I do praise her and give her affection when she does well, but what do I do when she behaves badly? Yes, I do get a stern face and the tone in my voice may come across sometimes harsh, but I want her to I want her and my other children to know that even when they are wrong or made a mistake, I still love them and, and they are still accepted in the fold. I do my best to show them that I love them through the easy and the hard lessons that they endure. I love how God uses my children to teach me that he does the same for me and he does the same for you. I love this because... I'm trying to show you that, yes, you're going to make mistakes. However, God will love you through it. He wants to show you that he is a, is a God of unconditional love. And how would we know what unconditional love is if 
it wasn't for those silly um, mishaps and, and mistakes. You know, we need, sometimes I think we need those mistakes in order to see that he, he has such great abundance of love for us and that he will love us through those mistakes and those mishaps and those misunderstandings, if you know what I mean. And I thank God that he is so, so understanding and he's so full of love. So I now lay down my desire to be perfect, the perfect wife, mom, sister, and daughter of the King of Kings. I lay down my mistakes for him to use however he chooses to. I am learning to trust God with my shortcomings and things I don't like about myself. I am learning um, it is my relationship in him and trusting in him with my mistakes misunderstandings, my faults, and even, dare I say, my selfish ways. Yes, I fall, but I don't shame myself every time I do. I have also learned that Jesus carried the cross, and the cross claimed my sins. It claimed my insecurities and failures. I am the one who keeps trying to re revive the negative mindset of who I think I am and ought to be. But I hear my heart now listen, this is from God. No, daughter, trust in who I say you are. Mistakes will happen, but give me permission to use them to cultivate a contrite heart and to teach you that I am a God who uses mistakes. Mistakes allow me to teach, to show you a new side of me. At a different angle, you can see how I am patient, kind, humble at heart, and gentle even in correcting you. I liked that. I love that reminder. I need to remind myself that on a daily basis, moment by moment, because I am so full of mistakes. Let me tell you. You can ask my kids. Ask my husband if you want. Well, I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, questions to ponder. How is striving to be perfect distorting you distorting your relationship with God. What are some of the mistakes you need to release him? Ask God to help you give yourself permission to make mistakes so you can learn and be okay with yourself. Truth to hold. Romans 8, 38 through 39 ESV. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present or things to come nor powers or height or death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Read this verse out loud as a declaration. Highlight, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Prayer Suggestion Spend some time with God with an open mind to ask him if you have a negative mindset that needs to be surrendered to him. If you have a negative mindset of how you view yourself every time you make a mistake, say something like this. God, I don't know if this was a mistake, but I trust that you will use whatever I said and did for my benefit and for the other person. Jesus, I trust in you. I hope this helped you in some way today. And if you have um, been blessed by this, um, I want you to share this with a friend. You can copy and paste this link to um, to somebody in an email, a text, or post it on your Facebook account or, or whatever. <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you so much for doing so in advance. And I just want to invite you to something that I'm working on in the near future. I put together, and I'm still working on it, um, a little study um, for Lent, and I'm calling this study, uh, Cut the Fat Out of Your Faith. And I've said in um, another video previously that, hey, we were all born with muscles, and uh, in order to have a lean, cut, strong muscle, you have to have a healthy lifestyle. You have to eat well, you have to work out, regularly on a daily basis. You have to challenge yourself. Even um, you have to even say no to some things. And of course, yes to some other things that would benefit you to be strong, right? If we need all this physically to have a physical, lean, strong, muscular body, then 
that's the same for our faith. If we want strong, lean faith muscles, then we're going to have to say no to some things. We're going to have to cut some excuses out. We're going to have to say yes to some and no to other things as well. And that's going to be a challenge. I'm going to admit to you, that's going to be a challenge for me. I have some rules laid down and we'll explain when it gets closer to the time. But I want to encourage you to pick up this book. This book, um, What Do I Know About My God by, by Marty Collier. I kind of like went through this book and I kind of like typed up my own notes just mainly as a conversation tool. No, I'm not affiliated with Marty. I wish I was, but I'm not. Um, I think this is, this is such a good um, and simple and practical and she did it in such a loving way, um, sharing her own little t uh, t tidbits and testimony and what verses that she gravitates to and she explains why and, and how and all that good stuff. This is a really good back to basics of knowing who our God is. And for some of us, we need that. And we need to just bask ourselves in the knowledge of God so that we can grow of who he is and, and flourish in that. And um, I want to encourage you to look this up in Amazon. And I'll talk to you more about the details of when and how and what we're doing with this book. Um, and when it comes to the to the time, uh, which is getting closer, we're going to start somewhere in March. I haven't decided exactly when, but heads up, March. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that with you guys. I'll explain more when, like I said, but hey, be embraced. Let God love you. I'll see you next time. And remember to circle back on Mondays for new videos. Mm -hmm.